Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we all know that power tools make DIY a lot easier, but can power toys make windows any easier? Keep watching to find out. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at the new Microsoft Power Toys version 0.64. Yep, it's still in beta, effectively, but it's actually grown to be quite a nice little ecosystem of handy little programs. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at how it all works, what it could potentially offer you, and some of the things which have caught my interest. So this is my Windows desktop PC, and as you can see, we've got the, uh, the Power Toys installer there, which we've downloaded. You can get that from GitHub. I'll give you some links in the video description so you can click on that and install it. It's very easy to do. It is roughly about 100 megabytes in size, so actually a very small little, almost portable, lightweight application. When it's installed, you do get a little icon in your taskbar, should you wish to, and you can right-click on that and choose your settings, report bugs, etc., etc. Uh, we're just going to take a look at the actual Power Tools itself. So this is the main Power Toy settings page and you've got all the options on the side there. So it tells you exactly what is going on, what is actually available. Currently, like I said, we're on version 0.64 and you can check for updates, etc. We're up to date currently. You can choose to download updates automatically, which I've turned on, that is as a default. Also, you can choose to have it run as administrator or not. Um, you can have it as always run as administrator, should you wish to. I've actually restarted Paratoys as administrator for this particular instance. You've also got your app theme, so you can choose your Windows default theme. You can also choose whether or not you want it to run at startup, and also you can back up and restore your settings, which is uh, all very cool. Now, some of the things we've seen in here before, because this has been around a little while now, so some of it is uh, gonna be a little bit old for some of you, but there are some cool new features, of which one of them is always on top. So always on top is basically making it so that a specific window can be on top. Now, for me personally, this is actually very handy. Say, for instance, I'm running something like Unigine Heaven, and I've also maybe got Hardware Monitor running, which um, we'll just fire that up now. So normally, if you've got Hardware Monitor running, as we can see there, so if this is running, if there's another 3D application running in the background, or you click on something, then you lose whatever's actually on the screen. So what you can do is in the Always on Top section, you can use the hotkeys, which is gonna be the Windows key, Control and T. And there we go. As you can see, there is a blue border around it. So now this window is gonna still be active and be in control no matter what we do. So we can move things around in the background and this will always remain active. If we wanna to switch to another window, so say this is our prominent window and we want this one to be on top, as long as you're on it, Windows key, Control and T and then you can have that one as well if you want to, because it's actually on top of the other one. So yeah, there's a, you can have overlapping, overlapping on top windows and still have something running in the background. If you want to turn off the feature, control, Windows key and T on the highlighted window. And we'll do the same here. And there we go. So that is a pretty cool little tool. So always on top is uh, pretty handy. I like that a lot. You can, if you want to, to find out the shortcuts, etc. you can go to Welcome to Power Toys here at the bottom, and this will show you basically the same sort of thing, just with slightly less detail, but tell you actually how it all works. So always on top, and you can see there are the control settings, so Windows key, control, and T. Next one is gonna be Awake. So this is actually, again, quite handy for me if I'm doing screen recordings, and I'm maybe walking away because Unigine's running, or Cinebench is running for an extended time, or some sort of game benchmark. You can actually get it to set the system to be awake, but without having to change your power profile. So most of us have got a power profile, so your screen maybe goes to sleep or goes into screensaver after five minutes or something. If you're recording content, that's a pain in the backside. So you can actually have uh, awake to be in the system tray. So you can enable awake, there you go. So you can turn it on or off. And basically it puts a little coffee cup and you can choose the default behaviors. So you've got the option of keep using your selected power pan, which is what we want to do, keep awake indefinitely, or keep awake temporarily. Now, if I'm running some benchmark and I want it to be just for maybe 30 minutes or half an hour, then you can choose that and you can say, right, okay, it's going to be about 30 minutes. So if I choose 45 minutes and then maybe 60, whatever you want to do, you can set it and tell it to keep the screen on. 
so we want to see what's going on, on the screen those kind of things so yeah it's a pretty handy little thing if you just want to keep on using your selected power plan all you can do is go down to the taskbar got your little cup there right click and you can switch modes there so you don't actually have to open up the application to be able to do it so if you want to just keep the screen on for some recording purposes you can do that just from a click which is actually uh that is actually really handy i'm glad that's on there so i'm going to keep screen on for this particular instance uh, next one is going to be your color picker this is a slightly older one but basically color picker you can use the windows shift and c keys you can activate the shortcut to pick up any color so if you want to copy a color if you're maybe doing some artwork and you need to get the exact colors for say the uh, youtube logo or the marvel logo or whatever it is you're actually trying to uh, replicate then you can do so very easily with that particular option fancy zones we've seen this before this is for basically enabling screen layouts uh, actually pretty handy i only have one screen on this particular desktop so not much use for me the next one is actually a new one which is the file locksmith so this is basically going to add a extra feature to the context menu on files so if there's a file so let's say this particular file here if we right click on it and we can see all the options we've got so you've got your normal windows options but you've also got a new one now which is what's using this file so we click on that and it'll tell you basically what is being used on that file so if you're trying to delete a file somewhere maybe it's in one of your temporary folders and for some reason it says windows cannot delete this file you can right click on it choose the properties look at what's using it and it'll give you a list of applications and it'll give you the option to obviously then you can terminate those applications and remove your file so that is pretty cool that is another one which is new to this particular version 0.64 of power toys I'll skip over some of the other ones because most of them are pretty old now. But the next one is your host file editor. That's actually quite handy as well. So you can enable your host file editor if you've maybe had a hack or some malware and your system is uh, doing some odd things or your internet is just behaving very weirdly, then you can actually launch the host file editor. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And you get the warning. Altering host file has a direct real world impact of how this computer resolves the main names. So obviously make sure you're aware of that click accept and there we go there are all the current entries actually in our host file editor and so if you want to you can enable or disable or if you want to you can create a new entry so you can add an additional line go through add in whatever you want to do anyway so there is your uh, host file editor it makes it a little bit easier to find and a little bit easier to edit i think pretty much everything else is kind of all the same sort of stuff uh, there's also some quite cool things if you're someone who actually corresponds with other countries and you want to do it in the right way you've got a choice to use quick accent which actually can be uh, pretty cool so if we open up a uh, notepad document and say for instance we want to say uh, something in let's say german so you can actually press the key and press the space bar and then you get all the other options so if you want to do the uh i think that's the uh umlaut in german sorry to do that again and you have to use the arrow keys and there you go there is the german o so yeah that's a uh, pretty cool little ways of doing accents and obviously there's various accents all around the world but they all appear to be actually in there you can choose different activation keys as well so uh, left or right you can use the space key blah 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 etc uh, languages you can have defaults or all of them yeah it's uh it's a pretty good thing there i like that it's a nice and handy thing to have it's the things like this which make power toys really great uh, things like screen ruler that is actually pretty cool as well so you can enable the screen ruler so if you do the windows key shift and m you can then measure things so say for instance you want to know the distance between uh, these particular spacings between this so click on this one here the down and then you can move this around so that is roughly 66 pixels in difference between those two or say for instance that text and that bar 198 or between there 255 okay probably going to find some use for this somewhere on the uh the use of your computer especially if you're into graphical stuff 
you can kind of replicate things and just measure how things are. If you want to maybe uh, make some sort of uh, GIF file or a JPEG or something, and you are limited towards maybe sort of Discord type stuff, so you want to have it a specific size, or for thumbnail icons, that sort of stuff, then yeah, this may or may not be quite handy for you. Uh, also, there is in there spacing, and you've got the horizontal as well, so you can do either way. But yeah, candy little tool. I actually like Power Toys overall. I think they've added some really cool features in there. The latest ones, actually, the Awake one and also the uh, Far Locksmith. I think they're awesome. Very nice additions. Uh, Awake definitely is going to be very handy for me. Uh, Far Locksmith as well, quite possibly will be as well. We'll see how things go as it progresses. But anyway, that has been the uh, the new options in Power Toys. So there you go, some pretty cool new features in the Power Toys application. It's all free, it is in beta, so obviously don't expect it to work 100% of the time and do expect some bugs and quirks, but of course you can report those should you need to. But tell me in the comments section, what would you like to see added as a uh, little tool or a little tweak for Power Toys? I'm sure there's some things which we all want to do on a daily basis, which are things you think, why is this not built into Windows? Why do I have to install another app or some kind of add-on to do this? Yeah, it would be very nice to see some uh, additional cool toys that we use on a daily basis. Anyway, that's an instruction to Power Toys 0.64. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content on this on a daily basis, then hit subscribe and the chime notification, and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how-to, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.